Hey, what's going on everyone? And welcome to another episode of Designer Head YouTube video, YouTube channel, YouTube video, YouTube channel. Just another episode. Today I want to talk to you about something that kind of been on my mind for the last 20 years and I have been asked about it for the last decade, but actually really more and more in the last four or five years. And what I'm really talking about is imposter syndrome. So one of the things that I used to do with most of my team members, anyone that would join my team, as a new member of my team, one of the first things I would do is I'll come up and say, I suffer from imposter syndrome as well. Just to make sure that they understand that it's not only them if they do feel that way, it's also me. And it's not only me or them, it's all of us. It's natural for us as humans to feel that way, especially people who are in creative professions. People who are, for instance, coding, I, I didn't hear as much from developers that they suffer from imposter syndrome. I didn't hear as much or I don't hear as much from other professions that I'm aware of, at least. But in the creative world, in the creative field, we often do feel that way because we don't always feel that we're good enough or, or we're good at what we do. Even though we get hired, we get paid well, we get clients, we create amazing things, we, we build successful projects, we build successful products, we launch things, we help companies grow, we help increase their revenues, we help with their usabilities, we help with a host of other things, but at the same time, oftentimes we feel that we're not enough. So I'm not doing my regular intro and, and now conversation. I'm just jumping straight in and I'm gonna just keep talking through this. So here's the thing. I do not have, better rephrased, I do not have a formal education in the field of where I have built my career, which is digital design. Why am I saying digital design and not UX design or product design or anything else? Because I started almost 24 years ago. Back then, there was no such thing as a UX designer. There was no such thing as a product designer. Well, correction, there was such a thing as a product designer, but that implied to a physical design, physical product designer, essentially an industrial designer. There was no such thing as interaction designer or information architect or, or any of these things. They were just either you're a graphic designer or you are a web designer when the web became a thing. And so I started my career when the web was essentially in its infancy, but literally just went through a dot-com collapse, which in a nutshell, no one actually knew what's gonna happen with that thing called the internet into the future because all the biggest companies and all the bubbles in Silicon Valley just burst. Companies went out of business, stock market collapsed, a lot of people lost their jobs. I lived in a very tiny bubble of immigrants in, uh, in Toronto, Canada at the time. So I had no exposure to any of this shit happening in, across the board, uh, across the border in, in the United States, especially on the West Coast, right? But at that time, I have discovered web design through just forums. Like I was chatting with people and people would be like, look at my website, look at my website. And I'm like, what is a website? I got curious. So I went, started digging into it. I downloaded a bunch of documentation on HTML, um, then downloaded a pirated version of Photoshop at the time, which was a common thing. I think it was Photoshop 3.1 or 3. Oh, geez, I, I don't remember. But it was one of the first ones. I think I think it was before they rolled out layers or right after they rolled out layers. Again, I don't remember, it was too many years ago. But the point being is I fell in love with digital design and coming from an artistic background because I'm a painter. I went through fine art school. I went through graphic design school. But graphic design school, we did not have computers, so everything was manual. So I used to draw menus and, and uh, letter by hand and build signs and um, 
design my own stickers actually by hand and so all of these things we done by hand essentially the career trajectory for me was going to work at a sign uh, company to design signs or uh print houses or something like that but at that time it was late 90s early 2000s when i discovered the internet and i discovered web design and i discovered websites they were terrible uh filled with clip art and if you don't know what that is please i beg you go and google what that is you'll be amazed uh such a nostalgic thing but anyway it was it was a wild wild west of the internet everyone was doing whatever the hell they wanted to do everyone was expressing themselves creatively and artistically through means of building and designing websites and so i just wanted to be a part of that community i wanted to be a part of that i was so passionately in love with that that i was doing my ba in architecture and interior design and i dropped out well technically i didn't uh, as usual in my videos i get distracted by watch technically i didn't i took a sabbatical uh to concentrate on my web design business uh, agency at the time when I, I started my agency in 2003. but as i like to joke that uh you know i am still on sabbatical i never actually went back to school point being is I was so in love with that I was I so wanted to be a web designer that I did not care if I'll ever be able to build a career in that I did not care if I'll ever be able to make money in that I did not care if I'll ever ever be able to even sustain myself with that in any capacity I just wanted to be it and I just wanted to design websites that was it that was that was my whole world at the time I kind of uh, put my painting aside I don't think I actually held a brush in my hand since 2003-ish or so. Which is odd to me because I was passionately a painter and an artist since I was basically a kid. I had my exhibitions, I was recognized by, by my city's art committee as a surrealist painter. My first exhibition, I think I was 15, 16, I don't, I don't remember, or something like that. So. I was on the path of becoming an artist, of becoming a painter, but then I discovered the internet, I discovered digital design, I discovered the website, and suddenly all of that went aside, and my full concentration, effort, and passion became websites. But from that point, right, it was, it was an incredible journey. It was a journey of discovery and, and learning and doing something that no one has, has ever done before, and building an agency that I had no business doing or <laughs> zero experience, zero knowledge on how to even do that. Mind you, it kind of failed eventually. But the point being is I was, I was just doing things that I loved doing passionately and I did not care about anything else outside of it. And yes, for the first couple of years when I decided to fully dive into becoming a web designer and taking a sabbatical from, from, uh, from school, registering my business and going and taking a job at night shifts at a gas station because I could not sustain myself from my quote unquote business because I had none. I have registered a company. I have signed some papers with a partner, which is a friend of mine who was an engineer at the time. And we basically decided to divide and conquer you code all design great let's do this thing and so for the first couple of years i worked at a gas station night shifts i worked at a manufacturing facility uh, building these little devices that swallow your bills in, in a vending machine while i was hustling and trying to get clients and learn more and then design websites and whatnot it took me years until i was able to even kind of a little bit sustain myself with just being a web designer but eventually I had to go and work full-time in an agency because our agency or our company wasn't as successful yeah we we're doing some projects here and there but it wasn't enough to sustain both of us so we had to go and find our own thing to do and luckily I found my first employment if you will uh, as a junior web designer at a web agency the job was, well, how should I put it nicely? Um, back in the day, we used to be called executioners. 
essentially people who know how to use Photoshop, but are not considered to be designers. So essentially, you're getting a instruction from your art director or a senior designer to go and design a set of buttons. Essentially, we acted as human uh, design systems. Like literally, that's what we did. Our job was to design or, or concentrate our efforts for weeks on end on a very specific part of the grand scheme of the project. So for the first probably couple of months, my entire job was designing buttons and navigation systems. So literally just designing uh, CTAs throughout the website and then navigations, the top navs, which means top tier, you know, drill in second tier, third tier and, and so forth, how it all would look like uh, and so forth. And it's just like one piece of the entire puzzle and it was my job. And so after about six months of doing that, I graduated to actually designing websites in that agency. So I was actually designing my own websites. Mind you, not for the huge or big clients, but for smaller ones. Again, I didn't care. I loved it. So I kept going with that. Now, the thing is, years later, many years later, when suddenly I found myself in a situation or a position where I am being hired no longer because somebody has a hole that they need to plug with somebody who knows how to use Photoshop, but now I am being hired on my quote unquote merits, meaning we see you as a talented creative and we want to hire best talent that we possibly can get for the money we pay for them to take a position in our company as a senior designer or an art director or uh, or something along those lines. And so when I got to a point of other companies wanting to hire me because they saw my portfolio and they said, oh shit, this guy is really good. So we want him. We want him to be part of our agency. That's when at some point the feeling of an imposter started to sink in. Because up until then, I viewed myself or I saw myself from, from the sideline, if you will, as just a, a learner, right? Like I'm not, I'm not contending to be a web designer. I'm not contending to be an art director. I'm not contending to be um, creme de la creme or good at what I do, but I am contending to be a learner. I wanna learn, I'm here to learn. I don't know anything. So just put me to whatever work you need me to do and I'll, I'll still learn from there as well. But when it got to be at the point of, well, now company or a team or a client is relying on you to deliver a specific level of work or a specific level of ex execution or quality, whatever that might be, then it became like, oh shit, can I actually do that? I didn't go to school for that. Is there even a school educating or, or, or training that? I don't think so. Not that I know of. Well, shit, am I actually good? I don't know. Okay, they offered me the job. I'll take it because it seems exciting. The pay is really good. I really wanna do this. So um, I'm gonna join. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go heads down, do whatever is required of me to do and hoping to God that I will not get discovered or I'll just be there until they realize that I'm full of shit and they're just gonna hire and they're just gonna fire me. Which I've kind of got to accept at those days of like, I'm gonna get in, do whatever is required of me to do. I'm gonna do my best. And if I'm discovered, fuck it, then I get discovered and they fire me and that's it. And so I was with this kind of a mindset, if you will, for at least a couple of years, if not more, going from, from one agency to another, uh, from one client to another. And at some point, what I started doing to my, with myself or to myself, if you will, is when I started getting higher and higher, I, especially after I got, I think, uh, my second or third award of kind of sitting down and, and, and having this sink in of like, I am actually good at what I do. Like, it's not, it's not just me thinking that. It's not just the employer that is giving me this job and asking me to join their company. 
it's also some independent body outside of the agency and me and my clients that says, hey, we looked at your work and we think you're actually pretty good. Granted, I was not getting the Oscars of the web design. I was not getting some incredibly famous awards. I don't think they were existing at the time. I think Webby came out, I don't remember, I think 20, uh, 2008, nine or, or something like that or seven. I, I don't remember the exact dates, but when I started out, there was no such thing as a Webby. I don't, at least I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. And so it started to, to kind of like slowly creep in that I'm actually pretty good at what I do and I'm actually worth the money that companies are willing to pay me or offering to pay me, right? And when I got invited to be an art director for the first time in my entire career, I was incredibly young. I was definitely unprepared to be an art director, especially to such a big team. But at the same time, I saw that as an opportunity. And one of the things that I pride myself on is when I see opportunity there and I am available and I am open to take that opportunity, I will jump. I will jump to that opportunity. I'll take it in because I try to teach every single person that I've been speaking to for the last whatever years is every job is, is a job. And yes, it, you should be dedicated. You should be you know going full in and then giving all of yourself and doing your best job. But in the back of your mind, not forgetting that this is a stepping stone to the next thing you want to do in your career, because every single job, it is a stepping stone because we are definitely no longer having such economy or environment or society where we go to work at one company and we work there for 30, 40, 50 years. It literally doesn't exist anymore. And so every job, I think the longest that I could kind of track people being at different companies, especially creatives, is I think seven to nine years. Um, and so again, even with those seven to nine years, you can still be with the mindset that this is still my stepping stone. And whenever I'm going to be done here, the next thing should be some sort of a progression, something higher or better or more or more interesting, better team. Um, I don't know, better pay, whatever that better looks like for you personally that's what the better is however in your jobs right a constant reminder that you got hired for the fact that you're good at what you do and they're paying you for it is really what i started doing them with myself is over time every single time i felt like fuck i don't think i know what i'm doing shit I, I am, I'm lost. I, I don't know what to do. This thing that I need to do for my team or for my project, I, I've never done this before. And so, and I'm not trained professionally. I'm kind of a self-taught. Um, fuck. They will definitely discover that I'm a fraud. In that moment, what I typically do is I, I pause for a second and I just sit down with myself in, in quiet. And I remind myself that look at everything that you have accomplished behind your back. Look at the fact that you are hired for this company and they're paying you this X amount of money, which could be, I don't know, shit, that's a lot of money. They probably saw something in you. They probably saw something in your track record and your background and your personality and who you are in your portfolio that they were like, you know what? We want this person from all the other people that we just interviewed or spoken with. We want this person on our team. And so that's a reminder to me of like, okay, I'm, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. I'm here because I'm good at what I do. I'm here because other people see that I'm good at what I do and they're willing to pay me for that. And so, yes, when I took my first job as an art director at the age of 27, <laughs> Jesus, this, um, yeah, those were some fun times. But I was handed a team of about, I think it was 12 or 15 people where 
I have never managed that many people. I think the max that I managed before that was maybe a few people. And I wasn't their direct manager. I was just senior to them and they were just coming to me for advice, help, direction and whatnot. And so I was acting as their manager, but I wasn't officially managing them. Prior to that, my management experience was basically working on my own clients and my own projects with my own agency and managing freelancers, which were not my direct reports, which just basically happened to be that I was their manager because they were working for my agency. I was at lost. Like, I was lost. I did not know what to do right away. I literally had to spend a weekend with myself to figure out, okay, how do I'm going to approach this? I have over a dozen people on my team. They're very diverse. I had web designers, graphic designers, print designers, animators, 3D artists, uh, and, and so forth. And so how do I how do I even wrap my head around certain things that I don't even know how they, how they work? Like at the time, I had no idea how uh, 3D artists operated. Like I didn't, I've never worked with them. And so I, I had to figure out what to do. And so, Luckily, one of, the, one of the things that I have in my personality is instead of running and trying to solve things or do things or execute, I tend to stop and learn. That's, that's my immediate kind of um, a protective layer, if you will, of myself is instead of making decisions, instead of making things or breaking things, I, I like to slow down, step back and learn to try and understand who the people are, how do they work, what do they prefer, what are they doing right now, what are they working on right now, what have they worked on in the last whatever couple of months, what are they looking to do in the next whatever couple of months, how do they see their career development going forward and whatnot. And so on my first couple of weeks of the agency, I literally spent time doing one-on-ones with every single uh, member of my team to just get to know them, understand who they are, learn about them, learn about their work, learn about what they're doing, what's what's working for them, what's not working for them. And somehow I figured out slowly how to actually manage that team and make sure that the team is operating as a well-oiled machine and we're going from our clients being pissed off at the agency to being the advocates of the agency because we suddenly shifted our gears and became a lot more effective, efficient, uh, producing amazing work on the on actual deadlines that we set out to have uh, and kept our promises to our clients, right? And so that's the moment when I think realized that being a manager came kind of natural to me and I really enjoyed doing that. And so from that moment on, every next job that I had, I was striving to be in a more of a managerial role or uh, people leadership roles, right? Again, even in those moments, I still have periods where I thought I'm a fraud and yes, I'm going to get fired because they hired me to manage this team and I don't think I'm doing a great job and they're going to discover that I'm full of shit and they're going to fire me. And those moments, once again, I'm going to, I would step back, I would sit down and start reminding myself of everything that I've done thus far, everything that I've achieved thus far, and everything that I'm doing now, and the reasons that probably the company hired me. There's a trick thing that I do typically when I'm going through interview process with companies. When they, when we go through this interview process, at some point of time, depending in, on, on the process, depending on who I'm talking to, I would ask the question of why me? And I don't know if it's a great question to ask during an interview process or not, but when I am going through an interview process, I genuinely want to know why a recruiter or a uh, manager or a CEO of a company decided to interview me and decided to progress through a process with me, not somebody else. There is a host of other people. I would ask, why me? And you'll be surprised how often I'll get an answer, a pretty specific answer of why me? It's either because of what I've done, it's either because of what I have achieved, it's either because I've worked with a specific company or a specific industry, or it's just because they think that my personality and my style of management from everything they know about me thus far 
is what they want in their company. And so it kind of gives me this reassurance from the get-go that I'm joining because they actually want me specifically to be part of their company. And so for the next whatever time I'm with that company, it doesn't feel anymore that I'm a fraud. It doesn't feel anymore that, oh shit, I'm gonna get discovered, they're gonna, they're gonna fire me. And I don't feel as an imposter as often as I usually do. So my advice to you is try to remember why you were hired. Every time you feel as an imposter, every time you feel that you're gonna get discovered, every time you feel that you're full of shit and you don't know what you're doing, just try to remind yourself, what have you done before? any of the successes you've had before, why they hired you, or even if you're curious, you can always talk to your manager directly and ask like why they hired you. And if they ask why you're asking, you can be honest and open and say that you suffer or you feel sometimes as an imposter. And that's okay. That's okay because we all do. Like literally every single creative that I have met throughout my career over the last 20 some years, at some point of their career, either very often or fairly often or kind of often, felt as an imposter, felt that they're, they're not good at what they do, they, they will get discovered, um, they just basically uh, weaseled their way into a company and somebody will discover at some point that they're full of shit and gonna fire them. And the list goes on. We all tell ourselves these stories of why we're not good enough, but at the same time, we are good enough. We are good enough because we've been doing this for X amount of time. And we've been getting hired, we've been getting clients, we're getting paid, we're accomplishing certain things, either it's awards or recognitions or successful product launches or uh, more users liking or loving your product or whatever you worked on, whatever that might be, branding, a product, a poster, a brochure, a business card, a logo, a website, a mobile application, a software, it really doesn't matter. There's no end to this, but every single thing that we do as creatives, as much as in most cases, people cannot necessarily touch this and it doesn't feel too tangible, if you will, we're still creating something. There's nothing in this world that was not designed. I want you to remember that. There is a, it's on my wall. Everything is designed because everything in this world is designed by a designer. And so remind yourself that we are not as useless as you think sometimes that you or me or somebody else are. We are responsible partially in creating this world. We're partially responsible in creating the technology, the, the products, the, the world around us, the internet, the software, the, everything that everyone else touches in their life was created by somebody like you or me. And so remind that to yourself. Get your head up, keep on walking. If some company let you go or if some company did not hire you, it's not because you're not good enough. It's because you are not what they need right now. You are not the person or the creative style or ability or approach or philosophy that they are looking for right now. It might change tomorrow, but right now it's just not for them or they're not for you. All of this professional relationship, it's like dating. It's like personal relationships. Some, we're, not, we're not meant for every single person out there. We're not the cup of tea of every single person out there. We are a cup of tea of a handful of people we're gonna meet and date and have relationships with throughout our life until we meet one that we're gonna spend the rest of our life with or not, it's your choice. But what I'm trying to say is, you are good enough. You are good at what you do, no matter what you do. It just sometimes, 
what you do is not what the other party is looking for or need at that specific moment. That's all. So on that note, I want to ask you all to stay positive. I know it's not the best times right now, but stay positive. Keep on going. Keep on being creative. Keep on believing in yourself. And never stop learning. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next time.